Pancake everyone. The modern crocodile can scare anyone. But in the Mesozoic era, the work creatures so terrifying that even the fiercest dinosaurs feared them. One such monster was the prehistoric crocodile Sarcosuchus. It's also often referred to as Super Croc. In this video, we'll talk about this creature, and at the end, we'll discuss the closest relative of Sarcosuchus, whose representatives still inhabit the Earth today. So watch the video until the end. The history of these giants dates back about 113 million years. At that time, the world was a completely different place. South America and Africa were a single continent, and the area now occupied by the Sahara Desert was a flourishing tropical plain crossed by numerous rivers. It was these warm waters that the Sarcosuchus favored. Despite their external resemblance to crocodiles, these ancient reptiles are not actually crocodiles. They belong to Philodosaurus, a sister group of modern toothed reptiles. However, Sarcosuchus itself carried very little about intricate evolutionary relationships. It simply destroyed anything that crossed its path. The remains of this ancient reptile were first discovered in the 1950s in Algeria and Tunisia by a team of researchers led by the French paleontologist Albert Félix de la Perenne. In 1964, a preserved skull of Sarcosuchus was found in Gardifois, which was immediately sent to Paris for further study. After its study, the creature was named Sarcosuchus, which means flesh-loving crocodile in Greek. Despite their impressive age of over 100 million years, many remains of these enormous crocodile relatives have been preserved quite well. Thanks to them, modern researchers have managed to recreate the accurate appearance of Sarcosuchus. And it's worth noting that this reptile looked impressive. Different estimation methods yield a wide range of results, but they all evoke a sense of awe. With a length of over 40 feet and a mass of around 8 tons, this reptilian behemoth was roughly the size of a city bus, albeit a bit shorter. To put it in perspective, just the jaws of this creature were about the height of an average person. It's no wonder that with such powerful jaws, this crocodile could prey not only on small and large fish, but also on dinosaurs, as well as several ancient species of crocodiles that coexisted nearby. This creature had a massive skull ending in a large potato-like nose and hornlets on each side of its nostrils. The prehistoric reptile was covered from head to tail in osteoderms, bony skin plates up to one meter long. This covering acted as a kind of analog to knightly armor. Sarcosuchus' entire body was covered with these plates, except for the tip of its tail and the front part of its head. This heavy armor deprived the predator of maneuverability and speed, but effectively protected it from adverse environmental conditions and increased its chances of survival during that extremely dangerous period on Earth. What's interesting is the structure of the giant's teeth. The fangs of Sarcosuchus weren't as large and sharp as those of modern crocodiles. On average, the length of their fangs reached about 15 centimeters. However, this was more than enough for a tasty bite. The largest of the discovered Sarcosuchus skulls measures about 1.78 meters in length, with narrow jaws accounting for around 1 meter of that length. The total number of teeth was 132 with 35 on each side of the upper jaw and 31 on the lower jaw. The lengths of the very sharp conical teeth ranged from 12 to 17 centimeters. They were well suited for puncturing fish scales. On the upper jaw, several of the largest teeth formed a semicircle, acting as a kind of hook that the reptile used to embed itself in large prey. The upper, longer jaw would cover the lower jaw when the mouth was closed. Sarcosuchus, as a rule, had a greenish-brown color, and their skin was covered in black spots. Like most modern crocodiles, they had pointed scales that served as protection against competing predators, including other Sarcosuchus. A particular feature that catches the attention of modern scientists is an unusual bulge. At the end of the upper jaw of Sarcosuchus, there was a large oval-shaped bulge. Its purpose remains unknown to this day, 
but there are two hypotheses regarding it. According to one version, it could have been a sensitive olfactory organ, while the second suggests that Sakasukas used it to emit a loud roar that would stun its prey. So what was the lifestyle of this prehistoric behemoth like? Well, researchers have managed to glean some information after all. For example, due to their massive size, Sarkasukas had the privilege of hunting terrestrial dinosaurs. The positioning of the creature's eye sockets indicates that Sarkasukas hunted much like crocodiles, fully immersed in water, leaving their nostrils and eyes above the surface. In similar terms, Sarkasukas employed a method that had been tried and tested for millennia, they would first mimic a colossal log and then deliver a sudden bite with a force of up to 9 tons. In doing so, these giants would patiently stalk suitable prey for many consecutive hours. Their diet primarily consisted of fish, amphibians, turtles and even dinosaurs that recklessly entered the water. When successfully capturing prey, these reptiles would attempt to drag them into the water, where they had a clear advantage. The predators would set up an ambush and wait at the edge or on the water surface until unsuspecting prey came to close. Positioned at a sufficient distance, the reptile would burst from the water to attack and capture the frightened animal. Sarkasukas couldn't lift its head, so it wasn't capable of the death roll maneuver used by modern crocodiles, grabbing prey and then rolling around their axis to tear off large chunks. Sakasukas would either consume the captured animal whole or dismember it in another way. In a sense, the giant could be described as a somewhat lethargic creature. This is because in cases where it missed and couldn't catch the animal, it generally wouldn't engage in pursuit. Exceptions were only made for small or injured animals that moved slowly and couldn't escape the predator. In such instances, Sarkasukas might seize the opportunity to chase the prey for a certain period of time. Next door to the Sarkasukas lived large, carnivorous dinosaurs called Zuhomems. They primarily fed on fish and, in theory, often became targets for Sarkasukas hunting. However, the giant mostly targeted young individuals. When facing an adult Zuhomem, the crocodile-like creature could potentially lose. Among the potential prey for Sarkasukas were also some herbivorous dinosaurs, such as Uranosauruses. During its free time from hunting, the crocodile had a habit of basking in the sun on the shores of water bodies. But if enemies larger than itself were to approach, for example an Argentinosaurus, Sarkasukas would quickly seek refuge in the water for safety reasons. By the way, the Sarkasukas is far from being the only giant crocodile. Throughout the evolution of a large group of crocodiles and their relatives, bouts of gigantism repeated themselves multiple times. This might be partly due to the aquatic way of life, as a massive body becomes considerably lighter in water. Nevertheless, the example of dinosaurs shows that gigantism was characteristic of many groups of terrestrial reptiles. For instance, there's the Danasuchus, a 12-meter-long alligator-like crocodile that lived 80 million years ago. By the way, Danasuchus translates from Greek as terrible crocodile, and the name doesn't lie. The wide massive jaws and huge conical teeth of this giant, which inhabited the late Cretaceous estuaries and bays of North America's western interior seaway, leave no doubt that it attacked anything even remotely comparable in size. There's evidence that Danasuchus bite marks were found on the bones of large terrestrial dinosaurs belonging to the same family as the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. In general, this monster's size was so impressive that frontal attacks were well within its capabilities. Another rival to the Sarkasuchus is the fossilized Cayman Marasuchus from the Miocene deposits of Peru, Colombia and Brazil. This huge 12-meter crocodile had wide, flat and very long jaws, with small conical teeth, 40 on each side of both jaws. These jaws were too fragile and the teeth were too weak to grab and hold large prey. More likely, it used them to filter water, 
hunting for small fish or sifting through mud in search of bottom-dwelling invertebrates. Nevertheless, occasionally the giant also hunted small dinosaurs. Well, of course we should mention the elasmosaur. This creature lived in the late Cretaceous period, around 80 million years ago. The elasmosaur reached a length of 14 meters, with a weight exceeding 2.2 tons. Half of the animal's length was its neck, which had over 70 vertebrae. This is more than any other creature known to science today. The long neck was an important part of the body that could extend far out of the water, unlike the Sakasukas. Despite its massive size, only four pedal-like limbs supported the creature's body, as fossils found in Kansas revealed. The animal had a small head, but its teeth were incredibly sharp. The creature fed on small fish and mollusks, making quick movements with its neck. The elasmosaur doesn't have any close connections to modern animals, but is a distant relative of reptiles. If you believe in the Loch Ness Monster, then this prehistoric creature might be what you're expecting to see. In history, there were extremely few other creatures resembling it. Among paleontologists, there's even a legend about how, during the creature's reconstruction, its head was mistakenly placed at the end of its tail instead of its neck. However, returning to the Sarcasuchus, this reptile wasn't just larger than modern crocodiles, but it also lived significantly longer. Most crocodiles in the wild live around 25 years. By studying Sarcasuchus remains, scientists determined that it was around 40 years old at the time of its death, and it wasn't yet fully grown. According to other research, some Sarcasuchus individuals could easily live up to 60 years or more. Unlike modern crocodiles, which reached their full adult size in about 10 years, Sarcasuchus grew throughout its entire life, which is why the animal became incredibly massive as it aged. How did it happen that this aquatic monster went extinct? Well, it's all the fault of the Spinosaurus, incredibly well-adapted carnivorous predators that thrived in the water. These agile and insatiable reptiles competed with the Sarcasuchus, which fought until the end, but 93 million years ago, it finally bowed out of the game. However, appreciating the size of this carnivorous reptile is possible even today. Fossilized Sarcasuchus skulls are fortunately not rare. They can be seen in various museums around the world. Sometimes even complete skeletons are displayed. This provides an opportunity for everyone to personally assess the size and grandeur of the crocodile lord and to touch the history of the planet. Some sources claim that the Imperial Sarcasuchus is the largest crocodile in history. Others give the title of supremacy to the Dinosuchus. The sizes of their remains are roughly comparable. The discovery of new larger bones, whether of one or the other, fuels debates where it's too early to put an end. Surely many are wondering who is the largest lizard on Earth today? The answer to this question, the Nile crocodile is the largest crocodile in Africa and globally. It only slightly yields to the saltwater crocodile, and even then, only in size, but not in bloodthirstiness. The Nile crocodile tops the food chain in its habitat. It grows up to 5 meters in length. These dimensions, of course, can hardly be compared to the size of the ancient giant Sarcasuchus. Next to it, the Nile crocodile will seem more like a toy. However, for us, ordinary mortals, this will be enough to take our heels and run faster than our eyes can see. The Nile crocodile practically devours hippos, rhinos, giraffes and even lions while they're still alive. Once, naturalists recorded a terrifying scene in Tanzania, where a four-meter-long Nile crocodile dragged a two-ton female black rhino into the water. The fight lasted for an hour and a half, after which the reptile emerged victorious. It swallows porcupines whole, quills and all, and antelopes and large fish are like sunflower seeds for its incredibly powerful jaws. It's also worth noting that this beast is a man-eater. It aggressively attacks humans and tears them to pieces. In short, if the Sarcasuchus has a modern counterpart, 
then it's undoubtedly the Nile crocodile. 